Psalm 119 verse 1 The guidelines found in his word are not left to us as arbitrary gray issues. The general subject of the psalm is the law of God and the principles contained therein should be considered as a rule for a godly life. God's word is used by the spirit in the conforming sanctification of the soul, as a support to the mind that is in turmoil and at war with our new nature and God's indwelling spirit. The flesh-trained mind reacts vehemently to the Spirit's guidance who imparts peace and contentment in contemplation and submission to Him. The general purpose and design of this psalm is to magnify God's divine law and make its principles known to those of us that live under grace. There are ten word phrases by which divine revelation is referenced in this psalm, and each expresses what God expects from His adopted children, and what we may expect from Him in return. God's Law contains the principles of his justice, enacted by him as our sovereign. His way, this is the rule of his providence, and on this side of the cross, we are led along this path by his spirit. His testimonies, are solemnly declared to the world by these two words, I am. His commandments, are given with authority. Jesus, the living word says in John 14:15, If you love me, you will keep my commands. HCSB. The guidelines found in his word are not left to us as arbitrary gray issues. We have his indwelling spirit as our guide. God's word in the scriptures is the declaration from his mindset. His judgments are framed in incalculable wisdom. His righteousness is the rule and the standard of what is always his will. Therefore, his decrees are always binding. His truth and faithfulness are eternal and unchanging, it shall endure forever. The psalm's prophetic nature is affirmed in a blanket testimony by Christ our Lord himself, we read in Luke 24, 44, Then he said, When I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the psalms must be fulfilled. NLT We will begin this study with Aleph which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. But first, we should be made aware that under the letter of Aleph these eight verses are complicit with the contemplation of the blessedness which comes through keeping the statutes of the Lord. Psalm 119,1 Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who walk the way of the Spirit and submit to the path of sanctification. God's word is the road that leads into our Lord's heavenly tabernacle and around his family table. They walk within the hedges of the law of the Spirit. We read in 2 Timothy 2.19, Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, having this inscription, The Lord knows those who are His, and everyone who names the name of the Lord must turn away from unrighteousness. The word undefiled is rendered here as is blameless, perfect, or sincere. It is the Hebrew word tamim which, you may recall that Psalms 1 and verse 5, gives the reason why the wicked cannot stand in the judgment with the righteous. Psalm 1 colon 5 Therefore the wicked will not survive the judgment, and sinners will not be in the community of the righteous. Our Lord who is the great judge and who fully understands the sanctified character of those who are his friends can discern between those with the imputed righteousness of Christ and all of the pretenders. Blessed are those who walk in the principles of the law of the Lord's sins, on this side of the cross of Christ, we are no longer made derelict by the penalty of the law, but we should be walking in the law of the Spirit. The psalmist is so captivated by the word of God that he regards it as his highest ideal of holiness and that we should be conformed to it. The law made sin known to us through Christ's indwelling course-correcting Holy Spirit, therefore we have become fully aware of God's principles and can live in obedience to those standards. Romans 6.14 For sin will not rule over you, because you are not under law but under grace. Romans 7 colon 4 Therefore, my brothers, you also were put to death in relation to the law through the crucified body of the Messiah, so that you may belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead that we may bear fruit for God. Romans 8 colon 2 Because the Spirit's law of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Blessed are those who habitually obey his law, who makes the will of God the rule of all their actions, and govern themselves and their whole conversation by those principles which constitute sincerity, uprightness, and perfection in a man's life. 
On this side of the cross, it is those who walk in the law of the Spirit, for the law of the Lord is the only just rule of human conduct. Luther renders it, who lives without blemish the idea is, blessed are they who are upright, sincere, perfect, in the conforming, sanctified course of their lives. God's blessing belongs to those who hear, read, and understand the word of the Lord, yet, there is a far greater blessing on those who actually seek to obey his will and make an effort to carry out in our daily walk and conversation what we have learned in our search of the scriptures. Jesus said in John 14:15, If you love me, you will keep my commands. Those casual Christians who fail to spend time in God's holy word, fail to walk in the fullness of the Lord's blessing. The sanctified person who loves the light will always have a closer communion with God and thus are enabled to keep themselves unsoiled from the world, and these folks enjoy far more peace and joy than their less watchful brethren. A believer who hears is still saved, but the joy of their salvation on this earth will not be experienced by them, they may be rescued but they are not enriched, guilt and conviction abide with them rather than the Spirit's blessing. The conforming sanctified believer does not live in a state of perplexity concerning our conduct amongst the worldly, we are committed to his godly principles and are quite happy to walk by them. God's principles are not irksome to believers and his commandments are not weighty, although we are committed to becoming slaves to his righteous principles, we are enabled to do so by the power of his indwelling Holy Spirit. We use his word as a chart to navigate the reefs of life. The course may be rough but God will guide us through the shoals and we will safely complete our journey. The Bible is our GPS, God's promises spelled out, and we must follow it carefully as we take aim at the port of heaven's gate, we must not think that we can gain it without continual devotion and effort. It is only by our daily communion with our Lord, through his spirit and his word that we can proceed along the way as we are purged from defilement, walking according to his statutes, spotless and without blame.